this is a lot of fiddly bits to do now because um, let's see, I need to get my magnifier in a place where I can work with it. You see all these little bits of uh, wood which have been uh, some of them are stuck to the paper, some of them. There we go. Right. So they're all varnished. And <clears throat> some of them are stuck to the paper. So I'll just have to take the paper off some of Don't worry about these bits. These bits are made to come off the end. Um, if you haven't. You haven't seen this before. You make a V from it, from these. It's coming off the papers. Yeah. So all of these, the ends are all going to come off. Just got to make sure you don't lose them. They all just pop off. See. Three. Four. I've had to do a bit of running about this morning, but uh, I'm not going to get very much done today because I've got a bit of running about to do that I'll to do some work in the garden. Right, so we've got six of these little bees. Hopefully, you can see all this. And we should have 12 little ears. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 11. It's Murphy's Law. Let's do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's another one somewhere. Go shop with them. At least we can throw it. 3, 6. It gets stuck on there. Like that. Then you take two lip leaves, make sure you get right by right. Look going from the other side, like that. Piece in a minute. Just trying to some of them. Cross off the table before we carry on. Makes no difference which way around you uh, put these in as long as you put them in holes. Hear them pop in the hole. If you look carefully at this, it's got a right angle on these back corners, a rounded corner on the front. Obviously, that's the fronts, which means I've got to take this piece of paper off here. Now, let's try and find the missing ear. Bear with me, guys, I'll come back to you. I knew it wouldn't be far away. It was just at the back here. Here it is. So, last, last tongue to go in. I call them tongues, they're like ears, I suppose. Now, if you're not familiar with shipwork, these go on the, the side of the ship. See, I'm going to have to touch the paint up. These go on the side of the ship, and they can be used for tying ropes on. So, kind of like a, a big belaying pin, but probably 
I'll find out later on what they use for on this ship. Okay, that's those built. These are painted, um, sort of. They have to be touched up. So I'll be touching all of these up with paint. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. I should be touching them all up with paint in a little while. And then we'll be getting the pins out, putting the pins in them. And also on all the other pin rails. And guess what guys? These then get fastened to the ship. Okay, I just want to make a photocopy of this uh, yeah, but I specifically want this bit because I'm going to varnish it. It becomes the, the floor of the captain's cabin. So while I've got the varnish going, um, of which I'm going to use, I'm going to use it on these uh, things here. I thought, well, let's do this while we've got it. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm just going to touch all these up. So I'll probably put you on high speed and to set up overnight. I've now separated these. I'm just going to touch up the paint on the ends uh, and then I'm going to put the pins in and then we'll see about putting them onto the ship. So just let me touch up the ends. I'll come back to you in a few seconds. Time to break out the uh, belaying pins again. So I painted them and I put them all back in the box. Here they are. They may not look very sort of golden, but that's the colour they were painted.
just gonna position some of these pins into the, uh, the rails that are already on the deck. I, I picked up the pins and I'll let the plastic continue here. <coughs> Pardon me. Now let's see if I can position some of these pins without losing them. That was springing all over the place. Like before, I'll do, I'll do one on camera, and then I'll carry on and do the rest, and uh, come back to you when they're all done. I've got the other twelve uh, rails already; some of them are still sticking, so I'm waiting until they're all stuck and set before I put them on the ship. But they'll be ready very shortly. I must admit they, they have done a good job of these so far. Having said that, then get one that sticks. <laughs> I don't know if, if you guys have the same things as we do, Murphy's Law. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. wonder why you need so many belaying pins, but um, I've done smaller ships than this. And, uh, yeah, you need a lot of uh, belay points. I mean, all of these will be, have ropes tied to them by, by the time the, uh, the rigging is put on. Between standard rigging and running rigging, um, there is quite a bit on a ship. Right, that's them all in position on there. Well, I've got these back two rows to do, but I'll carry on and do them and I'll catch up here when I've finished. To see from this angle, guys, but I don't know if you can see just there. I put one of the goats here, say, another one here, and there's one at the back. And I just can't get the angle on the camera to show you. That. Basically, yeah, you can see the back one. Basically, I've situated them with the bottom of this horizontal part level with the top of the gun ports. It just it doesn't give you any di uh, direct uh, measurement as to where they should be. But that's where it looks like they put them, so that's where I put them. Right, having done one side, I shall do the six pin rails on that same side. Um, and then I'll come back to you. Right, you down handheld to show you that uh, you, you have to watch you keep it clear of those uh, holes that you've made for the uh, cannon uh, holes. There you go, six rails, three guts, as I call them. On, that's the starboard side, and just to show you the pins on the, the rails here. Oh. Secure then. I always thought they were cat boost, but there you go. I just wanted to show you just to glue them in. So I've glued them in. And after all that, I see one pin right there. It's stayed high. And I, I don't think I can wiggle it down. But there's enough sticking underneath. Um, I can put a rope around it and tie it off. Not a problem. Okay, I shall carry on and do the port side and I'll come back to you when they're done. Okay. The port side is done. I hope I've got them sorted. They look like they're in line. 
and I hope they're in the right place. If not, we'll be moving them later. Okay, the next lot of work is on the bench, and guess what? It looks like it's cannons. So, some preparation to do before I start building cannons, like getting all the police done. No, I'm going to do it a different way around this time. But I'll see you on the bench in a few seconds. This is the preparation for the cannons. And here I've got 36 well, single pulleys and 36 twin pulleys. I'll just put a little bit of walnut stain in there. Give them a stir. And this is the easiest way to stain up all the pulleys that I sit and paint in or stain in my brush, each one individual. Just put a little bit in here. And I've got a piece of tissue standing by that I'll tip it all out onto and let them separate to dry. If you leave them in here, they'll stick to the, the stain. It's only stain, it's, um, it's not a varnish or anything like that. It's purely a covering. It's a very good, nice walnut cover. I hope you can see that on there. It's really pretty, you see? So little bits that need to be the same colour, I find it's a lot easier to do it like this, especially if it's something that doesn't stick. So, do you think is that enough? You can't get more walnut either, more of that. If you know your colours and stains, walnut's quite a dark stain usually used on decorative uh, wood. So, a little bit of kitchen towel. And there they come. Just to make sure you got them all. Leave those to to dry off. And some of them are stuck together. As long as the liquid, as the liquid dries, they'll separate. Now we've got some little tiny wheels to do. What colour are we showing here? Oh, red. Yeah, everything gets painted red. Except the, uh, the brass decoration parts for the wheels, they get painted black and then they get rubbed down with sandpaper. Mm. Sandpaper. I use a very fine emery because you're only rubbing surface paint off and embossing. And, uh, leaving the brass behind. See, I put it on top of paper, which probably was my mistake. So, let me put these over here. Now, Murphy's Law, that I talked about earlier, says that when I go to pick that up, they all come flying out. I hope not. Okay, that piece of paper has had it. <coughs> <coughs> I wish you could get rid of this cold that we've got. Okay, so we've got front wheels and back wheels for Type C cannons. The wheels are red, 
look like a bit of them red though I suppose and all the parts are red so and it says number 10 red isn't it? which I've got hidden away somewhere So let me find the parts and I'll come back to you. Uh, if you remember when uh, I did the Type F cannons, I painted the fuse black mistakenly, thinking they were going to be black, but they're red. So here's the Type C cannons here. So this should be fairly really straightforward. Right, so I'm going to try and film me making one of these pulley systems up. So, I've got 24 to make, but I'm not going to sit and film me making all 24, but I'll show you how I make one, and then I'll carry on and make the rest. So, I want three threads. I had done this earlier, but um, my uh, hands were in, mostly in the way of what I was filming. Okay, so take a longish thread, put a knot in it near the top, turn it a big knot. I also had a wasp in my shed here, which I had to chase away. One thing I hate is wasps. You, if I did that again, you wouldn't believe I'd done it. 
hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'll try and I'll try and do a zoom into what I'm doing when I do my editing. Just want to show you how I this is what I've worked at. How yeah, was my best way of doing it. So Only need a little spudge of glue, a little touch, just to keep the knot from falling apart. Oh, let's get back. Be back in the Washed, chased. So, back to where I was with this. Nip off this little bit of thread, don't need it. Okay, now this one, I'm going to wrap this around a single pulley. When I say a single pulley, I mean that's a pulley block with one hole. So. Is that what's in my hands here? Pull it tight. Try and keep this um, this knot that I made before on the bottom part of it. I need to look through my magnifier so I can see what I'm doing. can see that that's, that's the original knot that I made that where I tied the two strings together so that's on the bottom this is the top so a little touch of glue in there that little touch of glue doesn't just seal the knot, it actually holds it onto the block. So then what I want what I didn't do with the last knot, but I am doing with this, because I've seen they do it slightly differently, is just twist this thread a little bit. So you end up with a bit of thread. Put a bit of glue on it. And then twist it. Just let that set for a second. And you can see just that second is enough to make it go stiff. Okay, that's one half. Now we take a double, i.e. a block with two holes. We make a, a loop at the other end. I suppose I couldn't get away with doing a smaller piece of thread for this, but I so say when you pull it tight like that. held that one so that can stay like that now then we're gonna go with this thread that comes out the bottom it's gonna go into one of these holes makes no never mind which one 
it goes in. Then it's going to go up to the single, to the screws and block this time. I'm just hoping I can get all this on, on video. This is the second time today I've tried to do it. It's not meant to be an instructional video, just showing you how I like to do this. So this time we're going to go back through the, the second block, but make sure it goes to make it look nice that it goes through the same direction as it did before. It just makes it look better. Now then, what I do, not as I say, what I do, this is how I do it. So, catch the clip on the double, and then we're going to pull the string until we get that mm, made a huge distance between them. Can you see that? That's probably a little bit on the long side. Don't need them to be that long. I like it a bit, that much. Now, to finish it off, let me catch this one. So I've got a little bit of string between them, and we're going to do three half hitches. To see where the string is between them. Half inch is like half a granny knot, I suppose. As long as the rope goes back towards itself, that makes sense. Three half inches, just like that. Now, Finish it off, attach on the knot, try and get it down on the knot. Not like I'm doing it at the moment, get about halfway up the rope. Oh, yeah, if it's on the knot, it takes a few seconds and it's set. And then nip off the excess string to nip it off. Just go to the string, you run down until you, until you feel the knot, and then just nip it. And you get a nice neat nip of the knot right on the end. Now, in a few minutes, I'm going to put rings on the ends of these. One will go in the cannon, which I think is the single end goes in the cannon, and the double end goes, well, it will go to the front wall. I've only got another 21 to make, so I'm going to carry on and do them. And I'll catch up with you when I've got them done. But, um, 24 pulley blocks made up. That's for the 12 cannons left and right sides. And I've got the blocks here ready to make the ones for the back. Slightly different, and I'm just going to show you one while I make it. 
So let me just set the camera up and I'll come back to you in a second. I've got enough light to see and I've got a bit of a little magnifier down. You can still see. Okay, this time I've got two normal threads and I cut this one around about 20 centimeters long. So once again, it starts off the same way. No, we're not in the end. Take one of these short threads. Put it through that little loop. Actually, you pick the right tail to pull. Just like that. Make it tight. Put a spot of cyan onto there. I see. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. I can't even see where the glue is that I just put on that board. Just need to get a spot of the glue onto the knot. Don't matter if it gets <coughs> a little bit more than a spot as long as it's held. It doesn't seem to be. This is like Murphy's Law. If it can go wrong, it will. Right, this time I can see the glue. And there it goes, it's on a knot this time. You can see when it goes on a knot because the knot changes colour. So, pull off the little tail. Not pull off, cut off the little tail. And then, on this end we're going to put single pulley block. Uh, that is a pulley block with a single hole. Like and once again I drop the glue just to secure it. You see it's stuck onto the, the block. Now what I like to do is just put a little twist in the cotton there. Put another little dab of glue in there. And when you twist that with the dab of glue on it, it will stay twisted. It won't come undone, see? It gives you something to work with when you come to do the next bit. Okay, the double block is easy. Single knot. Take a double block, i.e., a block with two holes in it. Make it nice and tight. Once again, a little spot of the glue. Yeah, you just about see it there. And again, a twist on the end. A little blob of glue in there to twist in. There we go. It's amazing how quickly that sets, even with your hand going through it. Okay, so now we do this, the same again. The, the backwards and forwards of the uh, the middle thread, but it has a slight difference at the end. 
Now these are the pulleys which will go on the back of the cannons, the pulley blocks I should say, which will go on the back of the cannons. So what we want to check that you're seeing what I'm doing until I come to edit the video, which will be this evening. Oh, that didn't go anywhere. Hopefully I've kept you in the field of vision. It's starting to separate, but that's okay. We get to there, so we're going to do that. Just pull it together a little bit. Don't want a huge tail behind the cannon, do we? So again, nip it in there. Nip it in there and pull it. it's about a centimetre apart you see that about a centimetre apart leave this now because what I'm going to do is make a, a, a rope loop but I have a way of doing it that doesn't uh, involve having a great big loose loop like that and I'll I'll do the 12 blocks like this or 12 block systems like this I'll come back to you when I'm going to make the rope loops. Okay, see you in a few seconds for you. <coughs> a few seconds for you, it's been a couple of hours for me. I've got uh, 12 pulley blocks here with the long threads. I'm just going to show you on one of them how, how I make the rope loops. I've got here um, one of the spare wheels that was left over from... Uh, previous cannons and this is what I used just to get my center point um, leave about a centimeter a centimeter and a half something like that just put the rope around yeah. the hardest part is getting it started this tape is inverted so the sticky side is up. So hold on the wheel while you pull the thread tight around it. And then you just go around it and around it and around it and around it until you think you've got enough loops of rope to make it look tidy. I don't know if my hands are in the way, but hopefully not. I think you can see what I'm doing there. Round the circles. If you look on any ship, be it a small ship, you know, pleasure yacht, whatever, you'll always find that the ropes are always tidy. And the reason for that is to stop people falling over them. Just hoping you can see what I'm doing. I'll find out when I do the editing. Get a nice little loop. Let's call it a loop. It's a ring, isn't it? A ring of rope. That's more than enough, I think. 
And what I do then is I just put, so I'll take the wheel out in the middle before you do any before you do anything else. Take the old wheel out and then I use light cyano just to seal it in, in shape. That takes about 30 seconds to dry and now you've got a pulley block with a ring rope. You've got all this left over to play with so if you want to make it more you can do. Okay guys I'm going to carry on and do the rest of these uh, pulley blocks but that will finish this week's or tonight's video off. Um, if you like what I'm doing and you haven't already done so please consider subscribing. When you subscribe the bell icon will come up at the side of the subscribe and that bell icon if you click on it it's a notification and the notification will be when I put a new video up which in my case twice a week I try to do Mondays and Thursday evenings if there's any deviation to that I'll put a message on YouTube so feel free to like share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.